Hello, my Biblio darlings, and welcome back to Bibliothesia. My name is Mally, and the story that we're going to read today is called Ida Always. And I have to be honest with you, I just tried to read it once, and I burst into tears, so I'm trying this a second time. If I cry, we'll make space together. Okay, but before that, let's help our bodies get more comfortable, and let me read for you some jokes. What did the nut say when she sneezed? Cashew! Achoo! Cashew! What did the spaghetti say when it got tangled up? Not again! <laughs> and what did the tomato say to the bacon? Let us get together sometime. <laughs> and ready? <laughs> what did the steak what did one steak knife say to the other? You look sharp. Okay, well, let's read Ida Always. It's, a, it's an incredibly touching story. And each time that I read it, I burst into tears because it's the story of death. And these two beautiful bears, Ida and Gus. So let's start and I might cry. And if I do, okay. Ida Always. Mm, pardon me. Gus lived in a big park in the middle of an even bigger city. Buildings grew around him and shifted the shape of the, of the sky. Zookeepers poked in and out. Visitors came and went. But every morning, when keys clicked and shoes clacked, Gus crawled out of his cave and spent his day with Ida. Ida was right there, always. When Gus tossed the ball, Ida was there to catch it. And when Gus splashed water, Ida was there to splash him right back. They chased and raced until school bells rang. Then the two friends flopped onto their favorite rock while the city pushed, pulsed around them. I wish we could see it, Gus sighed. You don't have to see it to feel it, said Ida. Listen. They heard buses groan, trucks rumble, Police whistle, taxis honk, pigeons coo, people say, hey, wait, yo, hello, and children laugh. That's the city's heartbeat, said Ida. It's right here with us, always. When the sun grew dark, Gus and Ida waved goodnight and crawled off to their caves. With the subways humming underground, they added their snores to the sounds of their city Every day was always the same. Until one morning, when keys clicked and shoes clacked, Gus crawled out. But Ida wasn't there. Gus slumbered to Ida's cave. He heard her breathing, coughing, snoring, and sleeping. He sat in their sunniest spot and waited. The coffee carts ground their beans and the squirrels squabbled over crumbs. Visitors shuffled in, keepers bustled about. Ida had never slept so late. Snow monkeys and taxi cabs screeched. Ice cream trucks jingled. Still, Ida didn't come. Keeper Sonia came instead. Sonia told Gus that Ida was very sick. Usually there's a way to make a sick bear better, but this time was different. Ida wouldn't hurt, but she would get tired and too weak to swim and play. Then one day when her body stopped working, Ida would die. Sonia's voice was soft. But the words felt rough to Gus. His insides churned. His chin shook. Oh. The sky rumbled. Gus rushed to his friend. Don't go, he growled. Don't go, don't go, don't. Ida growled right back. Together they stomped and snarled, their growls turned into howls, so loud they filled up the zoo, rising higher than skyscrapers, scaring pigeons, surging towards stars. stars. And then they stopped. Two friends folded into one shadow and slumped quietly on the rocks. Two bears, two bear noses sniffled, two bear breaths panted, two bear hearts echoed each other's beat. A plane roared overhead. 
Gus and Ida wondered where it was going. They wondered where Ida was going to. They wondered and guessed and imagined as they whispered nose to nose. Wherever I go, said Ida, I bet I'll always smell your fishy breath. <laughs> that made Gus smile. He wasn't sure if he should, but Ida was giggling too. They let their laughs bounce back and forth between them. From then on, Ida spent most days in her cave. She slept a lot, but she didn't hurt. The keepers took good care of her. And Gus helped. He gathered her favorite toys and fishy treats. He brought her visitors notes. Aww. There were growling days and laughing days and days that mixed them up. Aww, they look like a heart. They formed a heart. Sometimes Ida needed a moment alone. And sometimes Gus did too. But at the end of each day, Gus always told Ida, I'll miss you. And Ida always told Gus, I'll miss you too. They would cuddle until the sky grew dark and the lamps of the city clicked on. They would wave goodnight a thousand times, then wave a few times more. Then one sunny day, while Gus smoothed her fur, Ida curled into quiet. Her eyes fluttered shut, and they didn't open anymore. Oh, I'm sad. Whew. Gus pressed one last pat into Ida's paw. Whew. What a beautiful story. Oh, what a beautiful story. The paper shared the news. The city cried. Yeah. For days, the zoo was filled with goodbyes. Aw, look at that on the paper. The news. Goodbye, Ida. Now when Gus, well now when keys click and shoes clack, Gus crawls out of his cave. Knowing Ida won't be there, he dives and swims alone, and he eats his lunch with Sonia. Oh, Sonia's lovely. They roll Ida's favorite yellow ball. Ida, Sonia knows that Gus's heart hurts. Some days Gus forgets. He looks for Ida on the rock, in her cave, behind the waterfall. When he remembers she isn't there, he rests in the shadows. <laughs> what a beautiful story. Oh, I'm loving it. I know I'm crying, but it's because it touches such a deep part in me. Oh, it's such a beautiful, it's such a beautiful story. But even in the shadows, the sounds of the city reach him. He hears buses groan and trucks rumble, police whistle, taxis honk, pigeons coo, people saying, hey, wait, yo, hello, and children laugh. <laughs> Gus smiles. He steps into the spot where Ida liked to soak in the sun. He listens to their city pulsing around him. He remembers that Ida said, you don't have to see it to feel it. Oh, Ida is in Gus's heart. Oh, beautiful. The sidewalks tap and the streets hum. Gus's heart beats and Ida is right there. Always. Oh, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And here's the author's note. Ida always is a fictional story inspired by the real pair of polar bears, Ida and Gus, who lived together in New York City's Central Park Zoo. The two bears swam, played, cuddled together for many years. They were visited by more than 20 million people from all over the world and deeply cared for by their zookeepers. 
By the time Ida became ill and died in 2011, she had created many wonderful memories for friends to remember her by. And when Gus died two years later, friends cherished their memories of him too. While I was working on the story, I visited Gus. He sat on a large rock surrounded by the city's skyline with his head tilted toward the sun. Like other loved ones who have passed away, Gus and Ida will be with me always. Wow. What did you think of that story? Pardon me as I blow my nose. Well, we know what I felt of this story. Very touching and loving. And it touched that part of my heart where it reminded me of my, it reminded me of my dad who passed away and other people, uh, dear friends who've passed away. So it really touched me at a very deep level. And you got to be part of that. And I'm wondering what was... Oh, pardon me. I burp sometimes when big emotions come up. What happens to you? Do you burp? What do you do? So what was your favorite part of the story? Please share. I, I would love to hear. And now as we close our time together for today, we're going to do a 448 deep breathing exercise. It means we're going to inhale for four counts, hold the breath for four counts, and then exhale out like we're blowing out candles or birthday, like birthday candles or wind. So when you're ready, inhale deeply for one, two, three, four. Now hold the breath for mmm, 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 mmm. And now exhale out for eight. Well, I'm hoping you're feeling more relaxed with that deep breathing exercise. And thank you so much for being part of today and witnessing my tears. And hopefully I was here to witness part of your story. Well, I always feel so grateful for you taking time out of your day to say hi, to pop by and to hear a story. Well, until we meet again, please take good care of you. Take care. Bye.